going to war, you're going to get one. Knock it the cards, the drugs, from my generation, I'll take the fall. The saints, the cross the nation, that it's a sex, the gods, the freaks, the frauds, the Welcome everyone to Reliving the War and welcome to 1997. WCW Nitro is live tonight from Monroe, Louisiana while the WWF broadcast a taped show from Albany, New York. We got through the early days of the Monday Night War back in 1995, we saw the introduction of the New World Order in 1996, along with HBK achieving his boyhood dream and losing it all in November. We have seen the rise of Stone Cold Steve Austin, the troubles within the Four Horsemen, the debut of The Rock, the Cruiserweights getting introduced to World Championship Wrestling. 1996 was an interesting year for sure, but 1997 is going to be something else. Let's get started by looking at the first 60 minutes of Monday Nitro. It's a new year, a chance to reset, a chance to clear your head and begin a new chapter. And WCW kicks things off with motherfucking Glacier versus oh Bobby Eaton. This is a treat for sure. With the recent news of Bobby Eaton's passing, I've been watching a ton of his matches on the network and here on YouTube, so I'm not mad at all. What I am mad about is the fact that Eaton put Glacier over in just around two minutes, but still, it was good to see another Eaton match, even if it was against our favourite ice cold Arch Ranger. Glacier wins with the cryonic kick. No Alabama jams or knee drops here guys, sorry. Remember last week when Wall Street took Big Bubba's place in a strap match against Conan? Well Bubba takes part in the strap match this week and the ending is pretty similar, Conan gets knocked into the final turnbuckle for the win. After the bout, Bubba hit the boss man slam on his opponent. Gene Okerlund interviews the Taskmaster and Gene wishes Sullivan and Benoit would get their issues sorted out so they could both go after the real enemy, the NWO. Sullivan again talks about having Benoit ready for a checkmate, there's gonna be no union between Chris and Kevin, but then Gene says he has a tape to show Sullivan and Kevin flips out. Kevin says he doesn't want to see any more videotapes of Nancy and Benoit, but Gene then says it has nothing to do with Benoit and woman. Kevin knows what this tape is all about, Mean Gene knows what this tape is all about, but we, the lowly common viewers, have no idea what the fuck this elusive tape is. Sullivan seems intrigued and we're left with a mystery that only Scooby and Shaggy could solve. Mean Gene then conducts an interview with the four horsemen minus Chris Benoit and Woman and here we see where Triple H got his double denim look from. Double A says he wasn't on Nitro last week because he didn't want to step on any toes as far as Chris Benoit is concerned, but the enforcer wants to know where Benoit and Woman are tonight. The nature boy says they're taking care of horseman business in not so many words. Flair says woman deserves a break after being married to the devil for 10 years and so she and Benoit are having the night off. Debra talks shit about woman as usual and then Jeff Jarrett comes out. The fake double J wants to know if Flair and Anderson want a part time horseman like Benoit or someone who can go all night long. Double J doesn't strike me as the type but yeah. Arn quickly tells Jarrett that he isn't a horseman and if he ever wants to be a horseman, he needs to quit crying, quit playing the victim. The horsemen are perpetrators, not little bitches who lip sync songs. Double J replies that he beat Benoit at Starcade and then he goes on to say, rather stupidly, that Arn Anderson always played second fiddle in the horsemen. He was second fiddle to Ole, Tully and Flair. But wouldn't that mean he played fourth fiddle? Anyway, Jeff says he wants to talk to the horse's head, not the horse's rear. Great line by the way and this makes the enforcer beat the hell out of Jeff Jarrett. A match then begins with Jarrett and Anderson and Jarrett gets the win by cheating, he lands a swinging neckbreaker and he uses the ropes for leverage when pinning the enforcer. After the bout, Deborah tries to protect Jeff Jarrett from Ric Flair leading to Big Mongo getting between Deborah and the nature boy. A big argument breaks out between the four horsemen, it leads to Flair giving Mongo a choice. If Jarrett is okay with Steve McMichael, then Jarrett is okay with the nature boy. Flair and Jarrett strut in the ring and Anderson says to hell with this. 
The enforcer leaves the ring and he heads back to the locker room alone. Interesting stuff going down within the Four Horsemen. Another time limit draw happened on Monday Nitro when Steve Regal defended his TV title against Jim Duggan. Diamond Dallas Page was supposed to work this match. His music played in the arena, but he didn't show up. We have seen better Steve Regal matches, but the crowd were into it. Plenty of USA chants and plenty of Jim Duggan nonsense. Eric Bischoff and the NWO took over commentary for this match. And Kevin Nash said that DDP now gets it. Dallas and Scott Hall are having dinner somewhere, working over the details, implying that Dallas has joined the New World Order. Hugh Morris then defeated Jim Powers with the No Laughing Matter moonsault in around 2 minutes, nothing special at all. The Horseman stuff was pretty good, but not much else happening on Nitro. Great to see Bobby Eaton, heartbreaking to see Glacier beat him. Raw gets the unopposed point. Oh shit, scared me there. Big Vader takes on Bret Hart in Raw's main event, and Vader says the Hitman is going to find out what time it is in tonight's final match. Owen Hart vs Mankind kicks off the action on the USA Network while Rey Mysterio takes on Psychosis on TNT. The WWF are getting fond of booking these quote tough man competitions on Raw, where a heel wrestles another heel. I'm not complaining at all because it freshens things up a bit. Foley vs Owen sounds very interesting, so let's see what happens. Mankind rushes at Owen right at the opening bell, but Hart lands a belly to belly suplex. After landing a few punches, Owen tries to end it early with a sharpshooter, but Mankind frantically gets to the ropes. Mankind lands a right hand that sends Owen back to the corner, Owen gets Irish whipped and he ends up taking a running knee from Mrs Foley's baby boy. Mankind claws Owen's face as Vince McMahon talks about some rumoured problems between Owen and Davy boy. Hart fights out of the corner and he tries to do some damage to Mick's left arm but a nice counter from Mankind sees Owen almost take the mandible claw. The King of Hearts then pulls off the most sensible counter to Mankind's finisher you'll probably ever see when Owen tries to bite the claw completely off. The two men get to their feet and Owen targets the hand. Hart stomps on Mankind's fingers and Mick hits the panic button. A big right hand from Foley brings Mick back into the match and Owen can do nothing but wait as Mankind comes running in with a clothesline sending both men over the top rope. Foley grabs a chair, Owen grabs his trusty Slammy award and Mankind ends up getting rocked. The bell doesn't ring for a DQ as seemingly these tough man contests had more relaxed rules in terms of using weapons, although interference would normally still call for a DQ. Foley gets dropped over the guardrail before Owen whips Mankind with his tag team championship belt. The match gets back in the ring where Hart deploys a ton of kicks, Owen's footwork keeps Mankind at bay and Owen even hits a spinning wheel kick to a grounded Mick Foley. Mankind finds himself in an abdominal stretch but he counters with a hip toss, Owen replies with an insiguri that sends Foley out of the ring. But Mick manages to throw Owen into the guardrail before using a container box to do some further damage to the King of Hearts. We come back from a commercial break and Owen takes a neckbreaker. He then counters a second neckbreaker attempt with a DDT, but Owen gets a little too confident when going for a top rope move. Foley catches Owen with a mandible claw and Owen quickly gets out with another spinning wheel kick. Owen runs at Foley but Mick moves out of the way and Owen hits the ring post. Mankind then nails a pile driver and it's all over. Foley wins via pinfall. I liked that this was given a clean finish, a really good opening match from Raw. Mark Curtis calls for the opening bell on Monday Nitro. Ray brings Psychosis down with a headlock before the competitors go through a drop down leapfrog sequence. It ends with Ray getting hip tossed over the top rope. Psychosis then tries a sit down springboard move to the outside but he botches it. He lands right on his shoulder but he's able to get up and continue the match eventually. Psychosis recovers and he nails Mysterio with a drop kick when Ray tries a springboard move of his own. And Mike Tanay explains to the viewers at home that Jushin Lager just defeated Ultimo Dragon in Japan for the J Crown. The J Crown does not include the WCW Cruiserweight Championship though, so Dragon is still Cruiserweight Champion. Mysterio takes a clothesline that turns him inside out. Psychosis then goes upstairs and Ray takes a top rope spinning wheel kick and Psychosis hits an apron leg drop as Ray was draped over the ropes. Ray finds himself at the guardrail where a fan begins slopping his head. Ray should have turned around here and knocked this guy the fuck out but there's no time for fan violence as Psychosis comes off the top rope. Psychosis smacks the guardrail as Mysterio moves out of the way. 
Ray then uses the middle ropes when performing another springboard move, this time it's a somersault senton. And look at how Ray still manages to hit this at what looks like a really awkward angle, great stuff here from Mysterio. The two men fight on the apron and Ray uses his legs to send Psychosis into the top turnbuckle and back into the ring. Mysterio gets back in with a springboard moonsault but he only gets a two count. Tony Schiavone then announces a Clash of the Champions show that's coming up in a few weeks time. And this would be a good time to let you guys know that the Clash show will get its own upload on this channel. Sold Out on the other hand will not get uploaded because I've already covered it. Sold Out 97 is on the channel already. And I'll remind you guys to check it out again when we get a little closer to the event happening on Reliving the War. After applying a head scissors submission, Mysterio takes a body slam. Psychosis goes to the top rope and he connects with a fantastic leg drop. Psychosis then argues with Curtis after Mysterio kicks out a two. Ray then takes an insane powerbomb. I love watching cruiserweights take this move. And the fans think Ray has it won when he counters another powerbomb with a pin attempt. But Psychosis kicks out. Ray then goes up and over the top rope and he stands on the apron. Psychosis comes running in, but Mysterio moves out of the way. Ray waits for the perfect opportunity to hit the West Coast pop and it's all over. Ray wins via pinfall. Two good matches to start us off this week. I'll give a point to both Raw and Nitro. HBK promo on Raw, Taskmaster vs Chavo Guerrero on Nitro. Jose Lothario has brought his son to Monday Night Raw, say hello to Pete. The least Pete could do is fucking smile. Jose says he's doing a lot better and he's going to be in Sean's corner at the Alamo Dome for the Royal Rumble. Pete says he's been looking after his dad these past few weeks, Pete says what Sid done at the Survivor Series scared the whole family, and Pete says, quote, in Texas we don't play that game. Yes, the smack a monitor with a giant camera game only gets played in places like New York. Pete says if he needs to go after Sid himself at the Royal Rumble, then he will. Fucking Pete, the absolute madman. Sean says Psycho Sid has upset the whole Lothario family. Sid can use whatever he can get his hands on at the Royal Rumble, but it won't work. HBK says he's going to pay attention to Sid's interview later in the broadcast. And also, HBK is once again going to provide commentary for the Bret Hart main event. Sean promises not to interfere. We then get some highlights from Shotgun Saturday Night that premiered just two days earlier. Again, if you want to learn about the first lot of Shotgun episodes, check out my video on the subject. Nothing special here really in terms of the promo. Funny seeing little Texas Pete here though threaten Psycho Sid. I'm sure Sid would eat this guy alive. It looks like Kevin Sullivan wants to take out his frustrations on Chavo Jr. The Taskmaster doesn't bother taking his robe off as he goes straight for the attack. Chavo gets knocked out of the ring but he comes back in with a nice top rope dropkick. We go to split screen where we see Sullivan hitting Benoit with a wooden chair at Starcade, and it's announced that another Falls Count Anywhere match is going to take place at Clash of the Champions, Benoit vs Sullivan. Sullivan begins attacking Chavo around the outside, Chavo takes a bump on the ring steps and he almost gets thrown into the crowd. The two competitors get back into the ring after Chavo gets thrown into the ring post and the match comes to an end after Chavo takes a knee strike while hung up in the tree of woe and Chavo also takes Sullivan's devastating double stomp. The tree of woe and the foot stomp are two of the absolute worst finishers in WCW by the way, both moves never get a reaction. Sullivan wins via pinfall, nothing special on either show, so no points. Gotta work for it lads, you gotta work for it. Also, where's this elusive mystery tape that Mean Gene was talking about earlier? We've got Alex Wright vs Eddie Guerrero on Nitro while WWF presents the fake Razor and Diesel vs Furnace and LaFong. Honky Tonk Man is back on commentary and this protege he's searching for also has to be able to sing, dance, shake, rattle and roll. He has to be good in the ring too so I guess that rules out Jesse James. LaFon and Diesel start this one off and a few strikes send LaFon to the mat. LaFon gets back up and he tries a unique sunset flip but Diesel quickly puts an end to that. LaFon pokes Diesel in the eye while getting choked but LaFon's momentum gets stopped with a shoulder block. LaFon tries to bring Diesel down with an armbar but Razor Ramon ends up getting tagged in and… <sighs> Razor hits a fall away slam as Honky Tonk Man says he's looking for someone like Razor Ramon. So the criteria he listed earlier on, 
throw it out the window because this guy has no idea what the fuck he wants. Close line in the corner from Lafon. We then see a quick chin lock, but a chin lock nonetheless. Lafon transitions into a crucifix pin, but Razor kicks out at two. Furnace comes in and Razor gets taken to school. A headlock takedown keeps the awful guy on the mat, but Razor gets up and he goes through a wrist lock routine. And check this out: Ramon hits some of those Scott Hall punches to the best of his ability. He goes to tag in Diesel, and Big Glenn is just like, nah mate, fuck that, I'm not tagging in. Razor must have forgotten the script here, but my god. Bogner thinks about the mistake he just made while applying an armbar. A sort of modified electric chair drop from Furnace gets followed up with a nice belly to belly. And here's the spot that Razor was supposed to remember. Diesel hits Furnace with a knee strike from the apron, and Big Daddy Warm gets in the ring without an official tag being made. A clothesline floors Furnace and Diesel goes on to attack his opponent in the corner. Furnace gets sent to the opposite turnbuckles and he takes another clothesline, and then Diesel tags in Razor. Would have been hilarious if Buckner refused to tag in here. Ramon hits a pump handle full away slam. We come back from a commercial break, and Furnace gets out of an abdominal stretch with a fireman's carry. Razor makes it to his corner and he tags in Diesel, and the big man hits a sidewalk slam to keep Furnace away from his tag team partner. Razor comes back in, there's a scuffle in the heel's corner, Diesel enters the match again without getting a legal tag, and Furnace finds himself getting choked on the middle rope. Look, I'm skipping ahead here because this is absolutely horrible. A dropkick in the corner gives Doug Furnace a chance to tag in Lafon. Diesel takes an enziguri as the babyface fires up, and Razor gets taken out too, but Lafon can't end the match. An assist from Furnace leads to Diesel getting pinned again, but the big man kicks out, and a big boot to the airborne Phil Lafon kills the crowd reaction. Razor comes back into the bout and he takes a Northern Light suplex. Furnace then gets tagged in, but he runs straight into a clothesline from Ramon. Lafon saves his partner from taking a Razor's Edge, and Furnace then hits a Frankensteiner that only gets a two count. Diesel has to break up the pin. The match ends when Diesel takes a clothesline over the top rope and Furnace and Lafon hit a middle rope assisted clothesline on Razor. 1, 2, 3, a pinfall win for Doug Furnace and Phil Lafon. I'm so over this fake Diesel and Razor stuff now. It was funny at first, but now it's just boring. Furnace and Lafon had some great moments on offense, but as a whole, I didn't enjoy sitting through this match at all. Before we start Guerrero vs Alex Wright, it's a point for Nitro. We see footage from Starcade where the NWO attacked Guerrero after his US title match. Six stole the belt too, so it's announced here that Eddie Guerrero will face Six at sold out in a ladder match for the US Championship. A friendly handshake starts this one off. Alex applies a waist lock, but Eddie gets out with a wrist lock. Wright pulls off the Owen Hart wrist lock counter, but Eddie follows up with a counter of his own. Wright kicks out a two, and both superstars get back to their feet. Eddie lands a head scissors takedown, but Alex swats away a drop kick attempt. Daz Wunderkind then lands two leaping head scissor takedowns before Eddie gets kicked out of the ring. Alex lets Eddie get back inside the ropes as the commentary team hype up NWO sold out. A hammer lock from Eddie gets followed up with a snap mare and a chin lock. Eddie lets go of the chin lock to perform a headlock takedown, and we get another stalemate as both men get back to their feet. Alex tries a headlock takedown of his own, but Guerrero slides out. Wright then gives Guerrero a clean break in the corner, and a few boos can be heard in the audience. Alex realizes he made a mistake when Eddie hits a back elbow, and Guerrero goes on to hit a scoop slam, followed by his apron to ring senton. Wright kicks out at two. An armbar from Guerrero gets followed up with a few strikes at the ropes. Wright fires back with a clothesline, and Eddie finds himself locked in a sleeper. Wright transitions into an arm scissors submission, and wow, this has been remarkably slow for an Eddie Guerrero match. A snapmare and a chin lock from Alex Wright, and the crowd remains silent. But then Six shows up on the entranceway with a ladder, and this makes the audience stand to their feet. Six taunts Guerrero with the US Championship belt, and Alex takes advantage. Guerrero takes a backbreaker, we then see another sleeper hold, and look at this little creepy bastard standing in the front row. A diving sunset flip from Alex Wright looks a little shaky, Guerrero kicks out at two. Alex then hits a belly to belly suplex, again only two. Eddie comes back with a side suplex, and Wright continues to pick up the pace with a double axe handle and a really smooth bridging northern light suplex. 
The match comes to an end when Guerrero hits a superplex. He then climbs the ropes and he points at six. We then see the frog splash. Nitro still wins this point, but only thanks to the closing moments of the match. It took a very long time for this one to get going, and it's a good thing that Riding Guerrero went up against Razor and Diesel here, as this was one of Eddie's weaker matches so far on Reliving the War. The Amazing French Canadians, no, not the Quebecers, the Amazing French Canadians take on Harlem Heat next on Monday Nitro, while Psycho Sid cuts another promo on WWF Raw. Alright, so this one's a little more than Sid just saying he's the master and ruler of the world and all that stuff. Sid knows he's walking into Shawn Michaels' home turf at the Royal Rumble, but the big man is afraid of absolutely nothing. And Sid then calls the ring the killing field. Sid, the <laughs> Sid then says, and I quote, You have to be hit or be hitting. You have to kick or be kicking. I'm not joking either, by the way. You have to hit or be hitting. You have to kick! We'll be kicking! I'm going to start taking Steiner Math and Sid English night classes. Sid says the day he was born, he was born the man. Have a look. And that's something Shawn Michaels can never claim. Sid's gonna walk into San Antonio with the odds stacked against him. He'll walk in the man and he'll walk out the man. Sid then says he's the master and ruler of the world, as expected. The promo comes to an end and this was some mind blowing stuff right here. Sean's theme music plays in the arena and out comes HBK wearing a long coat, looking like he's prepared to deal some Scooby snacks to the fans outside the arena. But the only thing old Snortsky's carrying here is his body. A body he shows off on the announce table and a body that makes Psycho Sid smile. And I mean, he smiles a lot. These two are going to war soon on pay per view, but Sid looks quite enamored by the Heartbreak Kid. Ooh la la. Sid laughs at this marvelous sight, and then Sid tells Shawn Michaels that he won't be responsible for what he's about to do. Wait a minute, so HBK shows some skin, Sid smiles from ear to ear, then Sid warns Shawn that he's not responsible for what he's going to do. What exactly is Sid planning on doing? Huh. Whatever it is, Sean gets prepared for it as we go to commercial break. It's kick or be kicking here on Monday Nitro guys. Remember, the French Canadians got the ring filthy last week so Booker T and Stevie Ray want a little revenge. Jacques Rougeau takes a double suplex from Harlem Heat, Stevie Ray then hits a power slam before Booker gets tagged in, and Booker continues the onslaught with a spinning heel kick. Booker then gets briefly knocked down but he performs a spinner rooney before nailing Rougeau with a jumping sidekick and this causes Robert Parker to jump on the apron. This distraction lets Cardwellette hit a clothesline and Rougeau does a little damage on the outside. When the match gets back inside the ropes, Booker takes a kicking in the corner. The French Canadians land a double stun gun, Rougeau hits a pile driver on Booker T and Willette gets tagged in. We see the Boston Crab and leg drop double team move and Card tries to pin Booker but Stevie Ray breaks it up. The referee gets distracted and the French Canadians try to use their flag on Booker T. Booker moves out of the way and Willette hits Rougeau. Stevie Ray then gets tagged in. He sets Rougeau up and Booker gets another tag and we see the heat bomb. Harlem Heat win via pinfall. We made our own fun out of the Raw segment but in reality the promo really wasn't all that special. The Nitro match was very very short but it's still getting the point. Main event time, Brett vs Vader on Raw goes up against two Nitro segments, Ming vs Lex Luger and a Hulk Hogan promo. Bret Hart comes out and he's in his complete pink gear tonight and he's also wearing plain white boots. The colouring on this episode of Raw makes Brett's ring gear really bright also. Sean makes fun of Brett's white boots at the commentary table so there's plenty of discussion about Bret Hart's gear this week on Reliving the War. We have a supermarket in the audience with a sign that says Sean just does not bring in the big ratings. To be fair, he's probably right. We see a clip of Jim Cornette taking a tombstone pile driver on superstars before our main event gets underway. Remember, Taker and Vader started a feud last week on Raw when Vader attacked the Phenom on the entranceway. Vader overpowers the Hitman after a tie up. The two lock horns again and Brett takes a beating in the corner. The match goes to the outside where Brett turns it around and Vader gets launched into the ring steps. Brett then jumps on the steps and Vader takes a shot to the back. Sean, meanwhile, is pondering over the saying, the man they call Vader. 
HBK wants to know who they are. Brett continues to punish Vader on the outside and Sean continues to bury Brett on commentary. It's all about Brett being dishonest, whereas Sean is more upfront about his intentions. A few strikes from Bret Hart and Vader finds himself in a wrist lock. Bret brings it down to the mat where focus is shifted onto Vader's arm and shoulder. Vader then decides to put an end to this nonsense and the hitman takes a hard clothesline from the big man. More of those signature Vader forearms in the corner, the hitman takes a short arm clothesline and just after Vader comes off the top rope and Bret takes all the impact, we see Stone Cold Steve Austin watching the match backstage. After a commercial break, Vader hits another top rope uh, big hug on Brett, and I have to mention Jerry Lawler's next line here as Vader sets Brett up for a splash. Jerry once reminded what Jose's son's name is, Vince says Pete, and Lawler says he should have been named Hose B so there would be a Jose and a Hose B. It's so shit that I popped for it. Brett takes a middle rope splash from Vader but he manages to kick out. Vader goes for a Vader bomb but Brett gets the knees up. Hart then goes on offense and Sean makes fun of the hitman's predictable moveset. Austin watches on as Brett performs a body slam on Vader. We see Brett's elbow from the second rope and Brett then nails the big man with a back suplex. Both men then tumble out of the ring and a fist fight breaks out. Psycho Sid shows up and he brings the cameraman backstage for whatever reason. And Steve Austin also shows up to hit a stunner on Bret Hart. The referee doesn't see it. Vader throws Brett back into the ring, we see the Vader bomb and Brett gets beaten in the main event of Raw. Not a bad match at all and it's good to see Vader pick up a big win on Monday night, even if it wasn't a clean victory. Sean looks at his monitor and he sees Psycho Sid backstage with Hose B. Sid says he didn't want to do this, Sean tries to rush to the backstage area but there's no time. Hose B gets powerbombed on a table. Sean gets to the backstage area and it's clear Jose is supposed to be here too for this segment. Sean screams, where is the 60 year old man? And you can see him saying, where's Jose? I don't think this was out of kayfabe concern for Jose B. I think it's more to do with Jose legit not being ready for the cameras. Anyway, that's how Monday Night Raw ended this week and I thought it was good. Ming vs Luger Luger has definitely gotten more manly over these past few months on Nitro but let's not get carried away either. Lex brings Ming to the corner and Ming takes advantage when Luger gives a break. The total package gets choked on the ropes and Ming completely shuts Lex down when the total package tries to build his comeback. Ming pushes Luger into the corner and Lex takes an absolute beating from the manliest man to ever grace God's green earth. The two move into the centre of the ring where Ming swats away a few flies before Lex gets chopped in the throat and the total package takes a shoulder breaker that only gets Ming a two count. A delayed pile driver from Ming also fails to end the match and it's now time for Ming's super combo. Lex comes back with a clothesline but it doesn't phase Ming. It takes a bionic forearm to bring Ming down and Lex follows up with a back body drop. Lex then gets a chance to apply the torture rack but Ming kicks the referee while up in the hold. This leads to the barbarian hitting the ring and Luger has no issues at all taking out both members of the faces of fear. Luger puts barbarian in the rack and the referee gives a submission victory to Lex Luger, don't ask. The commentators say Mark Curtis is too dazed to know what he's doing and even Lex is like what the fuck's going on? What's an episode of Nitro these days without a Hulk Hogan promo? I liked how the NWO stood at each side of the entranceway before Hollywood Hogan came out to the arena. It's announced here that the Giant vs Hogan is now official for NWO sold out and so Hulk must be here to talk about the match. Hogan says it was great destroying Piper last week but it was even better taking out that quote no good, stinky giant, stinky giant. The promo gets cut short as the giant hits the ring. The NWO stand at one side of the ring as the giant sizes up each and every member and then we get a big fight. The giant takes out Nash, Big Bubba, Scott Norton and Six. Shit Sting and Buff Bagwell get manhandled by the big man. Vincent of course is no problem for the giant. Even Nick Patrick gets thrown out of the ring with a press slam. It's just Bischoff, Hogan and the Giant left in the ring. Hogan swings for his sold out opponent but Giant grabs his fist. Just as Giant is about to destroy Hulk, Bischoff gets involved. Bischoff's distraction lets Hogan recuperate and the Giant gets nailed with multiple chair shots. 
The NWO get in the ring and it's a complete beatdown. Hogan continues attacking with the chair while the NWO gets some kicks in. It's kick or be kicking folks. And even Eric Bischoff gets a piece of the action as the giant gets completely decimated by the New World Order. The NWO then take over the commentary desk. We are the champions! We are the champions! Sting shows up and he says something to the giant before leaving his baseball bat. Kevin Nash says that Sting just told the giant he has bad hair and he needs to try a new conditioner. Vincent goes back down to the ring to get in another few cheap shots. Vincent picks up the bat, he checks to see if the giant is out, but the big man wakes up and Vincent ends up taking a thunderous choke slam. This looked great. Nitro goes off the air with the giant fending off the NWO with Sting's bat. And we get this weird double camera shot with Sting and the Giant. Looks like a music video for a shitty love song. Good stuff here from Nitro too, but I'm going with Raw. I was just happy to see Vader back in the main event, and I was happy to see him win. Raw's final match just felt way more interesting. It's a tie this week, and looking back at both shows as a whole, I think that's fair. Both shows were pretty good from start to end, but at this point, I'm now looking forward to Raw moving to 2 hours. I think things will get a little more decisive then when comparing both shows. The TV ratings saw Nitro gain a 3, while Raw got a 2.1. A vast improvement for the WWF in comparison to the last two weeks. We've got Davy Boy Smith in singles action next week against Rocky Maivia on Raw, and we've also got The Undertaker taking on the Nation of Domination's Crush in the main event. On Nitro, we've got a show that almost feels like a pay-per-view. Held in the New Orleans Superdome, Diamond Dallas Page is going to make a decision in regards to the New World Order, and surprisingly, Hulk Hogan battles the Giant in the main event. Don't miss next week's Reliving the War guys, please subscribe if you haven't done so already as that would really help me out, and I'll see you all next time.